Phil, I've heard you say that virtualization is unstoppable. Why is this? Well, I think um, if we look at the uh, statistics from surveys of CIOs, uh, at least half of them have already implemented some level of virtualization of servers in their organizations, and the rest are coming along. Um, you know, they start with the easy environments like test and development, and then they move it into production, and they find you know, it, um, it helps them save money, it um, is not impacting performance. But you know, there, there are more benefits to virtualization than, than just cost saving, because it speeds up the, um, you know, the, um, <coughs> the delivery of new servers to uh, parts of the organization. It puts in a level of automation and control in terms of policies and procedures. Uh, and it can also automate um, backup and disaster recovery. So it's got huge additional benefits in addition to that um, you know, headline cost saving. Uh, and so you know, all the CIOs we talk to are you know, hell-bent on uh, virtualizing almost everything that they can, um, given some of the limitations uh, you know, around um, licensing some applications where um, some of the vendors are, of software apps are, are still not producing licensing structures that, that currently marry with virtualization. Andy, would you agree? How is New York Stock Exchange um, adopting virtualization? Uh, we are starting to adopt it. Uh, clearly, we have the challenge of providing a very aggressive real-time environment, and that's not something that lends itself to easy virtualization. But once you step back from the core processing for trading environments and the real-time market data, many of our back office processes, our back, the clearance and settlement, the after hours processing can in fact be virtualized and we are starting to adopt virtualization in those areas because of the cost savings and the agility that it gives us to move forward quickly. Okay, so Mike, what is your take on virtualization? So from a Juniper perspective, we, we do agree that virtualization will continue to grow in the marketplace. And in fact, it's really not something that's uh, incredibly new because virtualization in the mainframe environment was pretty commonplace. It's just that it's become very new in the in the Intel-based server world. And it, it does offer a lot of advantages. We, we see some of our customers that will implement a hypervisor on a server even where they just run a single application because they have the benefit now of mobility. If they need to service that hardware, they can pick that up and they can move it statefully to another machine. It's That is very transparent to the users of the application and the business process it enables. Uh, but it sets some brand new requirements in the data center network that we really haven't seen before. It, it really uplevels the requirement around reliability because if you're going to live migrate this virtual machine from one physical server to another, the reliability of the network is becoming critical. If you're going to now use virtualization as a way to consolidate more into a single place and you're going to run multiple different kinds of applications on one machine, maybe you have the database tier, the app tier, and the presentation tier all on that same physical asset, then how you secure that becomes very different. Because before, those were on physically separate things, and you could put security appliances between them. So those are some of the things that we're seeing change as well in terms of not just the reliability, but also how you secure that. And then we're starting to see conversations around the latency in the network because you know th this is something that we hear from the stock exchange because it affects you know the transaction time that they provide to their customers but when you think about moving an operating system from one physical machine to another with live migration that is a huge file and you want it to go as quickly as possible reducing the latency reducing the number of hops is going to speed the process in which that will occur and uh, on top of that, as more gets converged into single data center, we're seeing the conversation around quality of service become important, especially where ultimately they want to converge not just the Ethernet IP data, but possibly more storage traffic. And they want to ensure the experience, the reliability, and the guaranteed reservation of traffic for that storage be, be there just like it was in their pure storage environment as they converge to one network. I, I, th I think that the that's why I try to bring out that conversation around, you know, you move a, a, a virtual machine, the latency there is important. I think multimedia environments where you're streaming uh, multicast traffic. Um, I think there's a lot of in places where latency is important beyond just transaction of, uh, of stock quotes and confirm, confirmation of, of a trade. And so I think the key thing is that the structure of, it, of the data center is changing from, if you like, silos where processors are in, and storage are close to each other to a much flatter structure where um, you, you may be using a, you know, a virtual machine almost anywhere within the, the structure and the storage could be you know, the other side of the floor. 
And so, you know, latency becomes critical because you can't predict how far away those physical devices are going to be. Yeah, and that's what SOA is all about, right? It's, it's you know, you're, you're, you're in a business transaction, it's, a, it's some process. And there's pieces of that get, get processed in different places, and they're spread out all over the place. And that's all transparent. It's just now the latency of the transactions between all that point are what make up the better experience of, okay, I hit enter, and now I get something out at the end.